So there I was Sunday, watching Slammiversary 15, and I had a good time. I enjoyed myself. I actually didn't feel that bad about forking over $39.99 for the show, because I was like, after all, this company technically made it 15 years. I didn't think that would ever happen. They did. I felt like, if anything, they deserved $39.99 of my sympathy money. Let's be honest. So, I felt like I was somewhat vindicated and justified for spending the money. Because it was a solid, effective pay-per-view, I enjoyed the show. And, you know what? It kind of just fed into the whole thing of, I miss this company. Because for so many years of doing this, they were a big part of my identity, big part of the channel's identity, and it feels like there's been a gaping void. Really. And it felt good to be back home. It felt right. It felt really, really good. So made the decision, I'm going to give this company another chance. I'm going to watch Impact each week. I'm going to review Impact each week. So now you know that, indeed, that is what's going to happen. I'm going to watch the show every week, and I'm going to review the show every week. Oh, my goodness. Fun times are coming back. They are, indeed. We are going to hashtag make wrestling fun again in 2017. And one way you can help out is to click that little subscribe button, click the bell next to it, or wherever the hell it's at, so that way you get notified whenever there's a new video on this channel. Hashtag subscriber die is the way to be in 2017. We are going to make wrestling fun again. I say that, though, and then I watch this week's Impact episode. All the while hoping that I made the right decision. All the while hoping that Sunday wasn't fool's gold. Oh, baby, was I fucking wrong. No wonder people aren't watching this crap. No wonder, what's even more striking, fans aren't reviewing this crap on YouTube anymore. Type an impact review for a given day of the show, and there's barely anybody talking about it. It's terrible. And I understand why. You look like you got a roster full of fucking jobbers. You had almost no story going on throughout this entire show. Really, truly, and honestly, you could say you maybe had one and a half stories. And of course, one of the stories is involving fucking Conan. Of course it is. This company ought to be ashamed of themselves. Who the fuck looks at this week's epic fail of a show beforehand, knowing that you have the ability to pre-tape it, knowing that you can put shit in, knowing that you can redo things, and thinking that this was a good idea to put on the airwaves of Pop TV? Was this episode only about getting over the stupid swole guys over? Or are we actually trying to get our wrestlers and the fucking product, the company, the new brand over? This was terrible. Bruce Pritchard, Dutch Mantel, Jeff Jarrett, whoever the fuck was involved with this. Everybody should take a look at the man sitting next to them, smack the shit out of them, then go in front of a mirror, look at that dipshit, and smack themselves too. This was an abortion of a show. How disappointing it was after Slammiversary on Sunday and all the good vibes and good feelings I had and how much I was enjoying it. To watch this on Thursday night and sit there the whole time thinking to myself, I've got to have something better to do for two hours on a Thursday night, don't I? Don't I? But you know what? It's a starting point. I'm not giving up. And deep down, you know you're not going to give up either. For sadistic purposes, whatever. Together, we are going to band together and we're going to hashtag Save Impact Wrestling. That's what we're going to do. Because we can't allow this to go. This was ridiculous. I want characters. I want story. I want purpose for what you do. If I wanted crappy WWE style, I would go watch crappy WWE, which is what I do. I come to a different company for something different. Not a light version of it, with jobbers for the most part. And much less in terms of production value. This was an epic fail of the show. Like even the opening segment, it was kind of lame. Even though it's tying right back into what happened in the main event of the Slammiversary 15 show, I don't think the segment was very good at all. Outside of the fact that Lashley was randomly trying to hit people with a champagne bottle, and he talked about he was going to build the wall around Alberto El Patron and his dad and his brother, which I thought was kind of funny, made me wonder, is he going to make Alberto pay for it? Is Bobby Lashley being investigated by the fake wrestling news media over WWE collusion? Where are you on this story, Dave Meltzer? But they're announcing that they're going to have a rematch tonight. So why the fuck would I buy the pay-per-view then if you're just literally going to wrestle each other again four nights later? 
This is the stupid shit this company did for years. Undercutting the pay-per-views where you're actually expecting people to pay money for it. Why in the fuck would they pay money for it if you're just going to give it, turn around and give it right back to them on free television four nights later? It's bad enough now that WWE does that shit all the time. And oftentimes, the rematch on Raw or SmackDown is better than the one you just saw a night or two before on the fucking pay-per-view. Why is Impact doing this shit? If you're going to have pay-per-views, then have pay-per-views. If you're going to do this shit, then why have pay-per-views? Just set up a fucking Patreon account and ask for fucking donations. Unbelievable. You got an X Division champion who just won a two out of three falls match against Low Key on freaking Sunday coming out wrestling some dude named Caleb Conley. Who the fuck is this jobber? And why the hell is he being booked to look so strong getting all of his shit in where we're making the X Division champion look like a fucking jobber? Why is Sanjay Dutt looking like a fucking jobber here? This felt like an enhancement match. And unfortunately, the enhancement talent was the X Division champion. Again, who structures this match as the backstage agent and thinks this is a good fucking idea? Oh boy, we're going to follow it up with some random fucking eight-man tag. You've got this dude named Grado who looks like a fat Colt Cabana minus the talent and the sense of humor. I didn't realize Crimson was back, but what the fuck is Crimson doing? American as fuck? American as suck. You call him McKenzie now? Who, who's thinking of this shit? In this match, the whole premise of it seemed like it was more designed to put over the stupid swole guys show than the fucking roster. Which, of course, is what TNAs love to do over the years, uh, whether it be with Spike TV or Destination America. And apparently now that shit's carried over to Pop TV. And then after the match, why the fuck is Joseph Park coming out to the ring with a piece of paper? And why should I fucking care about this with him and Grotto? Who cares? That's exactly what it was. Matt Seidel versus Braxton Sutter. Different company, still fucking Evan Bourne. Why is this match happening and why should I give a fuck? Who is Matt Seidel and why should I give a fuck? Who is Braxton Sutter, and why should I give a fuck? Now, I understand every single week you can't go and introduce everybody, but you can do things to make us actually care about these people, and this company, the retards that they were this week, did absolutely none of that. Then you get your one-hour main event segment, which usually you feature one of your hottest two or three stories. You use it to announce the Super X Cup tournament. Okay, I get it. That's fine. Something that's going to tie into weeks of television. I'm assuming will culminate at Destination X, the live show on August 17th. But again, as I look at these dudes in the ring, outside of maybe a couple of them, I didn't give a shit about any of them. Who are they and why should I fucking care? And how am I supposed to think they're anything other than jobbers? With that said, Drago, his fucking mask and what shit he does with his tongue, he looks badass as shit. Now, Davey Richards in there. I'm no Davey Richards fan, but at least there was somebody in there that actually knew who the fuck he was. I could actually have a reason to care about something he was involved in because he was just on the pay-per-view, even though we didn't follow up on anything on the pay-per-view involving these two. Um, but other than that, why would I give a fuck? And then you go into this, it was Idris Abraham and Desmond Xavier. Uh, you really want to get this thing over. You probably should go with the person that the most people are going to recognize watching your product, and that is going to be Davy Richards. Davy Richards' match probably should have been in this spot. I understand wanting to give these two guys a shine, but it, it, it's, again, just two guys I didn't give a fuck about. And these guys tried, but I really didn't get into the match other than Xavier's finish, which is pretty nice. But again, this was shit. The way they announced this just felt like shit. I'm looking at these guys, and we're like going for this being like a big fight feel, and it felt like anything but. It felt like some crap I would see on a local indie show with maybe 150 people in attendance. This didn't feel like something that belonged on uh, national television. I'm just saying. Hopefully some of the matches in this Super X Cup will be better. But this wasn't a good start to get the concept over. Um, a side note here. Watching Rebel vs. CNA, who gives a shit about the match? My goodness, Rebel is sexy as shit. What I didn't realize is that she's almost 40 years old. Rebel, if you want to stop wrestling, I will put babies in you. I will be proud to put babies in you. I don't care if I put the babies in your pink, your stink, your drink. It doesn't matter. You can give it to the Schleg Daddy as much as you want, and I will take it all night long. And you guys are welcome to chime in. Chime in. Do, do you? Would you rather put it in Rebel's pink, her stink, her drink? I don't care. But, at least, if anything else, I looked at her and I'm like, oh my god, instead of watching these ugly bitches on Raw or SmackDown, that's a sexy woman. 
At least to me. At least to me. And see, before you just sit there and go, oh, he's just a cuck for the black girls and da-da-da. No. I find white women and other types of women sexy too. And I would give it to them all night long. And Rebel, please, don't tell anybody. But I want a white girl so bad. So, so bad. You can give it to me. Give me that Heidi, please. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Anyways... On past the Rebel Love Fest until the next time we see her on television, which I will surely be goo goo gaga -ga uh, giggly shits for. On to the World Championship match. The rematch between Lashley and El Patron. Again, imagine my frustration being one of the few people that paid $39.99 to watch the pay per view watching a world title match happen again four days later on Impact. Granted, I didn't get a title change here, but how much different is it really? I paid for the pay-per-view. Why would you just do basically the exact same match four days later? And then, as I'm thinking that this is aggravating and knowing that Lashley's not going right back over, so again, getting into the WWE concept of why are we wasting my fucking time. Basically, we spent the whole night building up to a new member of LAX which you had to know going in, even if you hadn't read the spoilers, was going to be Alberto El Patron. We did this match. We did the whole night worth of shit for the one story, the one big payoff. And so that way Conan could get himself fucking over and his stupid fucking group over and we could put Alberto El Patron in it. And it went over like a fucking fart in church. And we're surprised. This is the type of shit I used to get from this company over the years. People involved in the creative process not knowing when to take a step back and instead using this as a pathetic excuse to push them goddamn selves. This is 2017. We're supposed to be rebranding the company. A lot of that dumb shit that this company used to do, we should be over. Not doing it like we ever have. All these years later, we still can't get over crappy heel factions where the emphasis is on the wrong people and it's not on the people that are actually doing the wrestling. This was dumb. Who gives a shit? I sat there and I watched as this went down and I don't know what the fuck was up with Alberto, whether that was part of the actual cell or the dude was legit hurt. Either way, it looked like shit. It was terrible. Who's booking this crap? And who thought again it was a good idea for two fucking hours to build the entire show around a new member of LAX so that way Conan can get one last shot of fucking glory for whatever the hell that's worth. Unbelievable. This was terrible. I felt insulted sitting there talking about how good Slammiversary 15 was to turn around four days later and watch this abortion of a show. It cannot be that hard. It should not be that hard. And frankly, I don't care if it's a fan saying it or not. It is not that hard. Again, all of you involved with putting together this show this week, not the wrestlers, but the creative members and so on and so forth, the Scott Demores, the Jeff Jarrett's, the Dutch Mantel's, Conan's, clearly, based off the way he's fucking being booked. All of you should be goddamn ashamed of yourselves, Bruce Pritchard included. How could you sit there and look at this on paper and think in any way, shape, or form this is a good fucking show? You coast through 90% of it because none of it fucking matters. I get that you're coming off a slam reversary and some of those storylines came to a close. Okay, well ding dong, dumb dicks. What the bluest of blue fucks are you thinking? Here's a good time to start some new stories. Like Moose EC3, you tease that. I don't give a shit that Moose is wrestling some guy from Pro Wrestling Noah next week. Moose EC3, something to get Jeffy kind of excited. Why couldn't we have a couple of more things like this? It's not that hard. It shouldn't be that hard, and it doesn't have to be that hard. But we're going to do it. We're going to hashtag save Impact Wrestling. I'm going to be back next week, and the week after, and the week after, and the week after... And we're going to keep fighting the good fight. And hopefully at some point in time, the message will get across. And hopefully at some point in time, this shit will get better. Because almost anything's got to be better than what the fuck we got this week. This pathetic, lazy excuse for a show.